Welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. My guest today is writer E.A. Smoraldo, author of the new novel, The Silent Count. E.A., welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Sure. Well, if someone listening hasn't yet heard about your new novel, The Silent Count, how would you describe the novel? Well, the novel is a climate fiction thriller, also known as Cli-Fi. And it is about a young nuclear engineer who has an audacious idea for solving climate change problem. But um, she's young. She's uh, got a lot going on in her life. And, you know, as a young, naive person, although very smart, she um, trusts the wrong wrong people. And because it's a thriller, all hell breaks loose. And my poor character goes through the ringer. And I think readers will, too. And I'm curious, do you remember the original idea or impetus that led you to write The Silent Count? Yes. Uh, I can tell you the origin story. Um, Just be aware that this idea is used satirically in the novel. No one is expecting us to actually do this. (laughs) Uh, So uh, I'm a nuclear engineer myself, and as a student in um, college, my textbook which is a very classic textbook used by all nuclear engineering students by John LaMarche, said uh, you can use nuclear weapons for peaceful pur- purposes. This was something called the Plowshares Program under um, Eisenhower. And they were doing thought experiments and looking at nuclear weapons to do things like build harbors and pull um, oil out of shale cost-effectively. And one of the things that they said was, you can even use nuclear weapons to eliminate certain mountain ranges and create more favorable weather patterns. So I thought, wow, this book is really bearing the lead. You know, this is, this is, why isn't anyone talking about this? <laughs> um, you know, this, this goes to show you that the major was very unpopular. So they didn't update the book for many years. Like it was in the 2000s that I was using this book and the date on it was 1983. So <laughs> eventually they released another edition of the book, and it no longer said that, but um, it captured my imagination. I thought someone has to write a crazy science fiction novel about this this concept. Nobody did, so I thought, well, why not myself? Why not me? That's so here great. we are. And I'm curious, uh, given the your your training as a nuclear engineer, how would a nuclear weapon change weather patterns? <laughs> well, um, what it would do is it, it would eliminate the mountain range, so you could reposition the the, one the book you know it could reposition the jet stream and uh you know create something more favorable for yourself i mean in the in the novel that the character creates a a simulation program where um they pinpoint the best places you know like if you it's sort of like i don't know if you saw the movie war games Mm -hmm. where um they have, you know, shall we play a game? And uh, they use the they they like to bomb different cities for fun, and it's all a game. But they don't realize that it's real. And this, they know that it, it it's a, you know just a simulation. But the government decides that things get so bad that maybe they need to use this. But as I said, it's satire. <laughs> right, right. And I'm curious, had you written fiction before writing the Silent Count? Um, I actually, I um. I have uh, written screenplays, and one of which uh, was uh, um, the treatment of it was won a prize in a contest called Screenwriter Stig, and it was optioned. So, um, yeah, and I've written short stories. You know, I took creative writing in school, and yeah, I, I had a, I mean, <laughs> I had a job where I was traveling overseas a lot, which was wonderful. But, you know, you sit on a plane for a really long time and you get to see a lot of bad movies. So <laughs> I saw one. I think it, it was, uh, with all due respect to Vin Diesel, because I think he's awesome. But it was Vin Diesel's The Pacifier. And I thought, I, I bet I could write something like, you know, better than this. So so I challenged myself and I wrote a screenplay and ended up winning this contest. So, um, yeah, so I have done it. And I, I think it sort of created a monster. I, this uh, option didn't really go anywhere, but... Then I decided I'll, I'll try my hand at writing a novel. And, and I'm curious, how how is it different for you um, from writing a screenplay versus writing a, a, a narrative novel? Uh, well, screenplay is very visual. It's also much shorter. You know, it's about, um, you know, it's about 100 pages long and uh, it's all double spaced. Uh, the novel is, is 280 something pages long and um, 
yeah, it's it's much longer. It took me a long time to write it. There's there's a lot more going on because you're really inside the character Ted. It's you know you do show not tell, but there's a lot there's a lot of inner life too that uh, isn't just something you you can say. You know, show a dark room, <laughs> right? So, yeah, but it was fun. It was a really nice. It was a it was a fun challenge. And um, I know that one of the main characters in the Silent Count is a musician. Um, how did how did your own experience as a musician impact writing that character? Uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> well, most of my life, I have loved to sing, and I have been a guitar playing fool. <laughs> Um, I didn't even, I don't know, I didn't realize that playing guitar seven hours a day when I was a child was uh, kind of a good way to not really have, it's a good, it's a good way for an introvert to spend their time, but then people wonder, what are you doing in there? So I, I love to play the guitar and sing and write songs, and I always have. And when I got older, I had a band that, um, you know, that actually kind of, I went, it hit the small time, you know, <laughs> we, um, we were fairly popular in the Washington area. We were on a small local label called Deep Reverb, and we were distributed by a larger local label called Discord that some people might have heard of. Sure. It was kind of a, you know, punk rock style uh, band. Um, yeah, we were, we were compared favorably to the dismemberment plan. <laughs> but anyway, it was more of a a pop punk type of thing. So um, anyway, a lot of the song lyrics I've written over the years work their way into the novel because, as I said, one of the characters is a musician and um, becomes, he actually hits the big time. And um, so this, there's this running theme. So, and the songs are, are songs that I've also sung and recorded and I'm putting them out there on YouTube as sort of a companion. Membership fees apply after free trial. Cancel any time. Okay, so why do people love my Total Body Bar workouts? Because they work. My clients get an amazing workout and great results. I'm Andrea Rogers, professional dancer and trainer, and my Extend Bar classes are fun, only 30 minutes, and proven to help you get sculpted, lean, and strong. And right now, you can stream my Extend Bar classes for free on the Beachbody On Demand app. See how effective these workouts truly are. Start for free today at Beachbody.com. When the leaves start rustling, the pumpkins start plumping, and the scarecrows start crowing? You heed the call of fall because you eat, sleep, and drink pumpkin at Dunkin'. So take your pick of pumpkin with delicious muffins, munchkins, and donuts and pair them with a classic pumpkin spice signature latte or the ultra-smooth pumpkin cream cold brew topped with pumpkin cream cold foam. Also, you can fall harder. America runs on Dunkin'. Price and participation may vary. Limited time offer. Terms apply. That's great. And I was going to ask, are you still playing guitar? I play it. Uh, yes, I do. I play um, in my home. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played out in a while, but who knows? Maybe, it, you know, uh, it's just there's there opportunity always presents itself in the strangest ways. Sure. But yeah, I I love to play. Um, yeah, it was a it was I was nominated for a Whammy, which is the Washington Area Music Award for um, during in in the time that I was really doing this and um, played music showcases and. It was it was fun. That's great. A lot was, of pressure, what the, though. What was the name of your band? Oh, I was it, I was just I had two uh, a drummer and a bass player behind me, so I was just the solo project, really. Got it. Yeah, it's my older. Yeah. Great. Well, what was your writing process like when you were working on your novel? Did you outline it extensively, or did you just dive into the narrative? So I am more of an outliner. Um, my I procrastinate. And it is just, uh, it, it's a big problem. I have to figure out, if you have any advice for me, I am all ears. <laughs> but um, procrastination is, is, you know, then, especially if you have a lot of interest, because, you know, you think, well, um, I could be uh, cooking this great recipe, you know, that Stanley Tucci uh, just <laughs> presented on the uh, Italy show, you know, that he does. So um, there's a lot of great ways to procrastinate. So I, I have to, I have to have an outline and I'm also, I also realize that just being open to anything, you know, anything can, can make their way into the book. You know, you watch people, you see how they interact with each other. Um, so that, that's a big part of my process too. That's great. Well, what writing advice would you offer for those who are working on their own stories or novels? Don't give up. 
you know, one thing about writing is it's yours and it's not really, um, you know, it's, it's your thing. You know, you can, you're the, you're the queen of the universe or the king of the universe and any, in anything you're doing. So you can change it if you don't like the way it's going, but don't, don't give up. Just keep at it. And eventually you'll wake up one day and you'll have 289 pages. That's great. And I'm curious, what books have you read recently that you enjoyed either fiction or nonfiction? Mm. Um, I'm reading a book called desire by, I'm sorry, Denial, not desire, denial by Jonathan Raymond, who is, and it's a climate fiction novel. So I've just gotten started on that, but it's a, it's another Clive Life thriller. So I, I'm, um, you know, I, I'm trying to write my sequel, mm-hmm. and I, I just want to be, you know, inspired by other people's creativity. I, I think I know my story, but um, this guy's really a master. So I, uh, I want to be inspired by him too. That's great. And do you think that this is going to be the the start of a of a new genre, climate fiction? Well, there, I know there are a lot of people who are writing in this genre. Um, I'd love to see climate climate change ideas or thoughts just in in just about anything. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a book about sure. a climate change problem. But um, I, I would love it if it if it happened i think um i I like to think well this is actually a theme in the book too that you know uh one character believes that our our problems can be solved by technology and the other character believes well you know we need art to carry the ideas out to people so they'll you know who don't read you know journals and science magazines so they can um really get the idea and understand it i mean lots of you know, lots of great ideas have come out of science fiction or, um, you know, or political ideas have come out of movies. So I, I like to think that there's inspiration for the readers. That's great. Well, where can people find you online if they'd like to learn more about you and your novel? Hmm. Um, I am, my website, my author website is E.A. Smeraldo. That's S as in Sam, M as in Mary, I R O L. D as in David, O, so easmeraldo.com. And E.A. Smeraldo is my Twitter handle. Uh, E.A. Smeraldo is for Instagram. E.A. Smeraldo, I have a couple of, you know, my Facebook is E.A. Smeraldo or E.A. Smeraldo author. I have a couple of them. Mm-hmm. So just come and find me. I'd, I'd love to say hi. That's great. And, and YouTube is E.A. Smeraldo also. So if they want to look for my song, just uh, search E.A. Smeraldo and um, you'll see the the channel is up and i'm sorry as i said i'm trying starting to put the songs on that's great well again we've been speaking with ea smeraldo author of the new novel the silent count the novel is on sale now so go buy a copy and ea thanks for doing this interview thank you so much for having me absolutely When the leaves start rustling, the pumpkins start plumping, and the scarecrows start crowing? You heed the call of fall, because you eat, sleep, and drink pumpkin at Dunkin'. So, take your pick of pumpkin with delicious muffins, munchkins, and donuts, and pair them with a classic pumpkin spice signature latte or the ultra-smooth pumpkin cream cold brew topped with pumpkin cream cold foam. All so you can fall harder. America runs on Duncan. Price and participation may vary. Limited time offer. Terms apply. Membership fees apply after free trial. Cancel any time. You know what's wrong with health and fitness? You weaponize it against yourself. Why didn't you go to the gym today? You're so lazy. Ah, why did you eat that? You have no self-control. Stop it. At Beachbody, we think training and caring for your body in a way that works best for you should be about loving yourself. Let us help you without all the judgment. Here's how. Go to Beachbody.com to claim your free membership and start feeling great.